website hello facebook so the rest of my little zoom workshop we are all now mics are cameras off but they are here with me so any comments from my group you can still put them in the zoom chat and any comments from facebook you are very welcome to add them to the comments and i will try and pick them all up so today we're talking about privacy, a digital footprint, and generally being a good digital citizen. So this is the third workshop of the Pontodusky Smart EU project, um, Social Media Resilience Toolkit. We've already looked at what is disinformation, what is fake news, and we looked at clickbait. And if you follow the links from those two workshops, you can see the activities and the few examples that we collected in a Padlet, so I will share the link to that later. So today we're looking at privacy in digital footprint. So Smart EU project, if you go to our website, there's loads of other resources. There's resources for educators, resources for young people, older people, uh, intergenerational groups and families. There's lots of things there to help with this. Okay, so privacy and digital footprint. The first thing to think about, are you media literate? What does that mean? Are you somebody who can read what comes up on your Facebook feed, your WhatsApp messages on Twitter, on Snapchat, TikTok, understand where it comes from, who made it, what it means. And are you also somebody who shares responsibly? So it's a two way process in the so. so if you're media literate, then you're a digital citizen. Digital citizenship refers to the quality of habits, actions, consumption patterns that impact the ecology of digital content in communities. So if you are making content and you are responsible for that content. So as, as a community, we are all responsible. Those, um, the content that's on our digital media. So there should be a video here. Let's see if we know how to work. actually find, there we go. So, why is it so important to be a good digital citizen? Digital citizen. So digital citizenship means participation. So acquiring knowledge, acquiring skills of effective communication and doing that through the responsible use of tech practicing forms of social participation and interaction that respect human rights and dignity. So it's about how you use it. And respect and responsibility helps in acquiring skills and effective communication and interaction that respects human rights and dignity. And the prevention of cyberbullying. So if we're media literate and we're good digital citizens, we can prevent cyberbullying by education on topics about media literacy and possibly decrease the number of victims. So it stops us from falling into the trap of saying things we shouldn't, and it also helps us to help others who are either victims of cyberbullying or perpetrators of cyberbullying. It's about working together as a community and being good digital citizens. 
another part of our citizenship is the footprint that we leave. So the electronic trail we knowingly or unknowingly leave behind every time we use the internet or other electronic devices. So we are leaving data every time we click a like, share something, access something. We are creating a data trail, which can be used by artificial intelligence. And we are also creating an information trail, which can be used by other people. So when we access services, we post something, we make comments, we check into a venue, all of that creates data. And that data can be used either in an algorithm to show you uh, targeted advertising, or it can be used by a hacker to um, clone your account and try and defraud you. So we unknowingly create this digital footprint. We don't set out to do it. Anytime we share personal information, uh, we use social media, click on an advert, we send an email, we upload a picture, sorry. If we buy something online, that leaves us the information trail for the seller. If we click on an advert and then buy it, that provides information that makes data. Um, anything we post on social media, anytime we write a blog, anytime we tag into a location, and just anytime we click on any website whatsoever, as soon as you click on accept the cookies, you've created another piece of data which can be used. So a digital footprint can be useful. It helps things like Spotify to create great curated playlists. It helps people send us information and news that we are interested in seeing. But it can also be used by hackers who can use the footprint to steal identities, access bank accounts, break into other online accounts. So it says you're a student, but anyone's digital footprint can leave you vulnerable to social engineering attacks, harassment, blackmail, or cyberbullying. So, you know, sometimes you get a, a friend request or a follow request from somebody and they have the same photo and some of the same information as one of your existing friends, but you know they've already got an account. This is a cloned account and it's there to try and attract as many people to click and interact with as possible. And then they will either add you to groups or show you advertising or whatever else. They're there to try and, there used to be like farms. There used to be, um, that doesn't happen so much now, but an event would happen or something would happen and it would just be there to click bait, to get you to, to click like, as so that they could collect um, a massive group of people and then you have like this group of followers and you can then fill their feed with whatever adverts, whatever information you were trying to send to them. Uh, also, as we've mentioned, advertisers will use your digital footprint to send you targeted adverts, which might be fine, that might be what you want, but you know, um, you're talking about something and then suddenly it comes up on your feed, an advert for it, and you know that you're being tracked every bit of data is used and every bit of data can be sold and monetized. So this is data from a study that was done in 2019 from the 28 European member states and Iceland and Norway where there were 28,000 respondents and of those respondents nearly 40% were victims of monetary fraud. So they had fallen victim to spending money on something. I, especially after lockdown, I noticed I get so many messages saying, um, try to deliver a parcel. You've tried to deliver a parcel and you weren't here. Uh, you need to pay like £1.50 because the postage wasn't enough or something like that. And you were so used to seeing the tracking texts and messages and emails that it's just like oh yeah 
it seems like it should be something to do and that's how they catch you because it's just it's something that we would regularly do and it's not something that we think too deeply about. 33% uh, victims of identity theft, so they were having cloned accounts in their names. And 23% have been victims of a buying scam, so they have seen an advert, clicked on it, spent money, paid for something and either not received it or received something completely different. I fell into this one. My daughter asked for a barking dog for her birthday. A friend posted a really, really cute teddy bear barking dog with a little video on my timeline. I clicked it, I bought it. And what came was hilarious. It was absolutely nothing like the beautiful fluffy dog that had been sent. It was one of those little 1980s toys where you click the thing at the button and it goes squeak, squeak, squeak and jump. And it was a funny, and I didn't spend much on it, but it was definitely not what I ordered. It's very easy to fall into. And then who bothers sending things back? It's awful. Okay. So examples. We get these spam emails quite a lot, don't we? Sending you an email to inform you that we've received an account cancellation request. Please click the link below to confirm or cancel. No, not very often that people that any of us would cancel our social media without knowing it. If you're going to cancel it, you go through the process, you click on the right button so you don't get an email to check. So what things are there? First of all, look at the sender's email address. Look at who they sent it to. Look at the spelling and the grammar, if you're able to spot that. So this first one here, this account cancellation request, is an example of phishing. You tr they want you to click, they will ask you questions about personal information, confidential information, which you shouldn't need to give them. They're trying to collect your personal data, they're trying to collect your account username and password. Most uh, email providers are now very good at picking them up, the occasional one does get through. Another one is, um, congratulations, you've won a gift card. You see this one quite often when you click onto a new website, it flashes up. It's really hard to get rid of, especially those like BuzzFeed kind of um, websites where you're just scrolling through and then you can't get rid of it. Some of them are nastier than that, but they want you to give your banking information so they can send you a so-called gift card that doesn't exist. We've also got these spammy things that pop up in your feed. Um, download this app to find out if you use your profile. They don't work. They never work. Of course, we want to know who's looking at our photos. We want to know who's interested in what we're saying. But it's just there to collect your personal detail and it's playing on your personal uh, vanity, your social standing, um, it's just playing on our emotions to try and get us to give out information. And sadly, it worked too often. So, it's not possible to have complete privacy on the internet. As soon as you are on the internet, you are giving out information. It's too easy to take a screenshot. It's too easy to download other people's photographs. It's too easy to copy what people write. But it doesn't take too much effort to make sure that your privacy is tighter and as, as private as it can possibly be. So, basics, keep your password a secret. Um, Secondly, you don't have to answer all the security questions. Quite often, if you're making a user account, there'll be information with a little star by it that you will have to give to fill the form, and there'll be other information which you don't have to give. So give out as little information as you possibly can. So don't give out your password. Don't give out any more information than you absolutely have to. Don't give out multiple phone numbers. If it asks for two, put the same name twice.
be careful with cookies. I know it's really difficult because we've spent hours reading through all the cookie agreements. But if you're looking and searching for something, try not to, yeah, just try not to click allow cookies all the time. And you can see if that's the right page or not before you click allow cookies. It just saves those cookies being accepted. And then clear your search history. So even if the cookies are there, you can try and get rid of some of them. Clear your search history. Uh, be careful about what you consent to and read the small prints. And I know there's pages and pages of it and it's intentionally long and boring to stop us from checking it all. But if you can spend a bit of time just going through and checking what you're agreeing to, especially things that you use regularly, like your Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google, just check what's there. If you're writing something, sleep on it, give it some time, maybe wait until the morning, especially if it's late at night, or you've had a drink, or you've had a night out, or you've had an argument, sleep on it, publish in the morning. Anything that you say, anything that you publish, anything that you share can be very quickly turned around the next day if you, uh, as it speak in haste, repent at leisure. Just think, take your time. Um, log out and just try and visit websites that you trust. You can see in the top here this little um, padlock symbol. Check for that. And that will show you that you can trust the site that you're on. And it's a secure page. Most browsers nowadays will stop you from visiting insecure pages. So that's just very basic. Just think about what you share, who's going to see it. And I would add, if you're going to write something on social media, make sure that you wouldn't mind your grandparents reading it, your parents reading it, your next door neighbor reading it. Um, a very close friend reading it and someone you've never ever met reading it. Just think about the whole audience and all the possibilities. So you have some rights, but you also have things where you don't have rights and where you think you should. So things that you share on social media. Um, we don't always have the privacy that we think we should. We don't always own the photos once we've shared them. Things like Instagram. You have to check who now owns the photos once you've shared them to a social site. So there's a great website here. Um, hmm. This one, Understanding Legal Issues for Social Networking Sites and Their Users. And it's long and it's boring, but it's important. So this is the find your legal professionals site. So it's put the two relevant bits of legislation that you need to know about. So if users post content, this section removes liability for copyright infringement from the website. And section 230 immunizes websites from liability when they publish information that comes from another source. But you don't have these immunities, you don't have those immunities as a user. So social media users don't enjoy any of the immunities granted to social networking sites under the law. So you need to be careful if you post messages or files. So the main places where you can get into trouble if you post defamatory content or content that infringes on intellectual property rights. So you need to be careful that what you're saying is 
not defamatory and you have to be careful that the content is yours to share because the websites themselves are not going to get in trouble they're going to pass that on to you also worth spending a bit of time researching internet law gdpr eu e privacy regulation we're not going to run through it now but it is worth just sitting down, spending an hour reading through it and working out where you stand before you're in a position where you need to know it. It's good to know, it's good to be forewarned or armed. Okay. So the next thing, the task I want you to do, and the task that my Zoom group are going to do with me once I stop sharing, and I'd like you all to join in too, is Google yourself. Trace your own digital footprint. Just type your name into an internet search. Do it in Google. Also do it in Bing or um, something different that you wouldn't usually use. Or use something like DuckDuckGo, which doesn't track your information so it won't give you information based on your previous searches so if you use your standard search now and type your name into it it will come up automatically with the sites that you quite often visit which is not necessarily a good representation of what comes up when you search yourself from from you so yeah Use yours, use DuckDuckGo, check the images, check the video search, try different types, different um, permutations of your name. I've got three or four possible names I go by plus some pseudonyms, so something would come up. Um, and if you don't want to Google yourself, you can Google me. So you can Google Angela Caradog and Angela Gerard and Angela Reese, and you will find information and sites about me. If you find something you don't expect, write it down, make a note of it, just for yourself. Don't share it with us because we're on about not sharing too much information and not sharing things publicly on the internet. But if you want to reflect on it or you want to tell us that you were surprised by what you did find or surprised that you didn't find anything, then pop it in the chat below. It'd be interesting to find out. So yeah, that's the activity for today. The activity for today is search yourself on the internet to find out what you find. So let's say thank you for your attention. We've got one more session tomorrow and then we're going to put everything together so that you can access the videos and the resources and the links all from Ponte Dusty site and the Smart TV site. And finally, there is a survey to do, which I want my Zoom group to do. And I'll post the link so that anyone following on Facebook can add to it too. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.